What's good, y'all? Glad y'all could join me for the first episode of Chappie vs. Moss series, starring two young quarterbacks fresh out of college and basically explaining their rookie years. They both come from different backgrounds, but they're both going to be battling to be the faces of the franchises that are struggling right now, which are the Minnesota Vikings and the Oakland Raiders. Now, my boy Chappie is a recent grad from the University of Minnesota. He was a promising prospect, slowed down by a knee injury in his season senior year. Watching him grow since high school, the Vikings take a chance on him, but he will be battling it out with Ponder and Webb his rookie year, so nothing is guaranteed. Can he be the QB Minnesota fans have been hoping for, or will he be just another failed attempt at reviving the franchise? Now, before we get started, man, I just want to look at the rosters. And as you can see, currently, Chappie is in the leading spot, um, and he's battling out with the other two young guys. Booker was signed at the halfback position. Everything else is the same there. The Vikings did, however, make a trade for Jonathan Baldwin, a young wide receiver out of Kansas City Chiefs. And, uh, you know, he's looking to be one of the main targets, him and Percy Harvin, moving forward with these Vikings. Um, you know, everything else pretty much the same. They got the same offensive line, tight ends. And, uh, you know, they don't make their next major move until they decided they needed a younger defensive line. And so they went ahead and went after Everson Griffin. And they also signed Vernon Golston from the free agency to, you know, try to get themselves a younger, faster defensive line because it seems you need a faster pass rush in the NFL in its current state. Um, the linebacker position, they also signed Julian Peterson from free agency, a veteran guy but he can still definitely get it done. Um, he's a little bit quicker than the guys they had before. They also traded for a young middle linebacker, Danell Ellerby, and he's looking to be the guy in the middle that can really change things up for him. And also from free agency, they signed Keith Bullock in hopes that he could you know, help out these young linebackers and really bring an impact to the linebacker core. Now, at the cornerback position, many moves were made. They traded Anton... Antoine Winfield, and you know, they traded him and some draft picks, and they got DRC and Jimmy Smith, and they kept Chris Cook. So, those three will be the future of the franchise at the cornerback position. Definitely three great players, all three of them pretty big, and definitely going to be a huge impact at the corner position. And it's really going to solidify their secondary much more so than they had before because we all know that position is very weak. Um, for free agency, they signed Kareem Moore, and he's basically going to serve the purpose of a backup safety, and starting will likely be Tyrell Johnson, and the kickers and punchers remain the same. But let's get into this first week of the preseason. Your boy Chappie, you know, he's coming out, doesn't have the legs that uh, he had in college since his injury, but he definitely has improved on his passing, and he has a cannon, and he's got some accuracy, but unfortunately... His guys are dropping the ball a little bit, and he's, um, you know, unable to, you know, look good on the stat sheet. But he does make that completion there, and that definitely helps out his day. But he's trying to force the ball in a little bit too much right now. And, you know, the team coach is just wondering why he's forcing things. He does make a veteran decision there to throw the ball away. A lot of times guys will make a mistake, but he does decide to try it again to force another pass into a tight pocket and the coaches are on the sideline screaming so going into the second quarter you know the coaches decide they're gonna you know it's first first week of the preseason they're gonna put in joe webb and his first passing attempt he throws it deep and it ends up being an interception due to a terrible overthrow and it doesn't seem that webb was prepared for this game he overthrows his first two balls and then rudolph drops one um, you know, he's really just missing his targets. Um, his targets seem to be open, but he's kind of just overthrowing every single pass. And, you know, the Vikings head coach is definitely not happy about that. And he tries to squeeze in another pass on the sideline and throws another interception there. So going into the third quarter, Ponder comes in and on his first attempt, he drops back and he takes a sack. Um, and then on his next play, he shows some really good pocket presence and decides to check it down for a quick little pickup. And, uh, you know, on his third play of the game, he finds AP in the slot on the streak, and he is out of here. A huge play made by the young quarterback and a huge boost for him right there. 79-yard um, pass. 
Um, coming up on his next series, though, again, his first play, he takes it seven yard sack. And um, next play, he kind of checks it down, but he sets his wide receiver up to get hit. Um, next play, he tries to squeeze one into Camarillo, but fortunately, does not work out for him. Uh, coverage was too close. And then on the next series, he goes ahead and, uh, you know, he tries to pick up the first down to get the win for the team. Doesn't quite work out, but, you know, with uh, the lead they have, it definitely works out because they just end up punting the ball off. And the Titans have no time. So the Vikings do end up winning their first preseason game. And, you know, the ratings from Ponder and Chappie and Webb really are indicating that Ponder's going to be moving up in the role um, currently. He's third on the depth chart. But following this game, coaches decide that they're going to move Ponder to the second spot. And, uh, you know, hopefully... You know, that'll be a sign to Webb and Chappie that nothing's safe and that uh, things are real serious out here, so they better step their game up. Now, as far as Moss goes, this dude has got all the talent in the world. He's got good legs and a decent arm, but he's always maintained his status of being in trouble. He got kicked off the UCLA team for violating rules, but after his mother passes away, he decides to go back to school at Fresno State. Uh, after a good year there, he tries his luck in the NFL. And the Raiders decide to take him and Pryor and trade away Campbell and Palmer in hopes that these two young guys can bring back the glory days in Oakland. Will these young quarterbacks be able to help out all the talent that is in Oakland, or will they just be another miscalculation by the franchise? And judging from the first preseason game, um, both quarterbacks had terrible days, um, you know, throwing picks, not too many yards, not too many completions. So the Raiders organization decides they're going to pick up Sage Rosenfelds. And Rosenfelds had this to say. He's coming in to battle for a starting job and, uh, you know, help out as much as he can. Now looking at the rest of the Raiders roster, it's pretty much the same. But they did, you know, trade Palmer and trade some draft picks and trade uh, Campbell. So they ended up getting Eric Decker, a nice wide receiver option, which the wide receiver core was pretty weak at the Raiders. Um, you know, they got a lot of fast guys, but they're not too good at catching the ball. They also traded for Dennis Pitt of the Baltimore Ravens to get another possession tight end. Um, Boss wasn't working out with them, so they decided to move him. And um, defensively and offensively, they're pretty much set with their team. They also went after a young linebacker, Sergio Kendall, and, uh, you know, in hopes that he can be a real difference maker for the team and, uh, you know, really make some big changes. Um, they have high hopes in Chimdi Chekwa and Van Dyke, the young corners. And after the first week of the preseason, fans are wondering who will be the starter in Minnesota and will Rosenfeld actually be battling for a job or is he just there to help the young quarterbacks out? I want to thank you guys for staying tuned for the first episode of Chappie vs. Moss. Let me know how you guys like it in the comments below. And be sure to tune in for more to see these young guys and how they develop in their first year in the NFL.